Hello everybody, this is Spino Dragon 145 for Epoch Now. Today, I will be covering some of the new scientific papers published in May of 2025 on behalf of this year's Paleo Rewind hosted by Edge. A link to his channel will be in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive right into some of the biggest publications released in May 2025. The first paper we'll be covering focuses on Cretaceous North Africa. Published on May 5th, co-authors Andrea Cow and Alessandro Paterna analyzed the specimens and material known from the early and late Cretaceous taxa, Cryptops, Eocarcaria, Bahariasaurus, Delta Dromaeus, and the recently named Tamari Raptor. Cryptops and Eocarcaria, which were described in the same paper in 2008, are found to both be chimeric taxa. Both paratype specimens found alongside the holotype for both theropods strangely belong to an indeterminate Allosauroid, and while the phylogeny for Cryptops remains the same, Eocarcaria has changed significantly, as the single lacrimal of the holotype it's known by is now believed to potentially come from a baryonic kind Spinosaurid, much like the contemporary Suchomimus. Additionally, the Egyptian Bahariosaurus, once believed to be one of the largest Megaraptorans ever found, along with the highly enigmatic Moroccan Delta Dromaeus, are now discovered to be the same taxa, but since Bahariosaurus was named first, this gives it priority over Delta Dromaeus, and therefore, it's now considered a junior synonym. Although Cow and Paterna aren't the first to propose this new phylogeny for Delta Dromaeus or Bahariosaurus, the authors also find that Bahariosaurus could be a part of the Abelosauroidea superfamily, making them distantly related to animals like Carnotaurus. Although, unlike Nizar Ibrahim's Kemkembed's paper in 2020, it is instead hypothesized that Bahariosaurus belongs to an as-of-yet undiscovered family of Ornithomimosaurus like a Belosaurus closely related to Noasaurids. Tamari Raptor, which was described in January, more on that in Dino Guy's Paleo Rewind, is also placed within Carcharodontosaurinae after the new genus was found being far more closely related to Carcharodontosaurus than previously thought in its formal description. Overall, this paper is jam-packed with phylogenetic and taxonomic changes for genera new and old, and it certainly changes our understanding of North African dinosaurs that lived in the middle of the Cretaceous. Moving Moving on to the next paper of this month, we have a new genus of Herebosaurian dinosaur from the late Triassic of India named Maleriraptor kuti. Its generic and specific names refer to the Upper Maleri Formation, where it was found in 1985, and its discoverer Tharvet S. kuti, who initially described the type specimen ISIR-282 in 2011. The holotype specimen is only known by fragments of the pelvic girdle and a single caudal vertebra. Although not known by much, this new genus is important to the evolutionary history of these early dinosaurs, as Maleriraptor is officially the first of its kind found in India, and it is diagnosable enough to be considered distinct from another fragmented taxon, Alwalcaria, a basal saurischian from the older, lower Maleri formation. Now, probably one of the most profound papers of this month was the revival of Truodon. Between 2011 and 2017, the taxon was considered as a nomen dubium and was eventually replaced by its synonym, Stenonicosaurus. Additionally, some specimens previously referred to Truodon were assigned to the genus Latinavenatrix. In other words, Truodon was split into two different genera. However, over the years, paleontologist David J. Vericchio and his colleagues have come to disagree with this assessment and thought that Truodon should still be the proper name for this taxon. In fact, Stenonicosaurus had never been used as a distinct taxon in the past 30 years since it was synonymized to Truodon by Philip J. Curry. As such, Varicchio and colleagues published a new paper that brought back Truodon as a valid taxon once again, describing three new specimens uncovered from the Jack's Birthday site located in the Two Medicine Formation, one of which, being MOR553, is known by a collection of bones from individuals of different ages. Because of the new material and comparing them to what Stenonicosaurus is known for, it has once again been found as a junior synonym to Truodon. If that's not all, Latina Venatrix is also found to be another potential synonym, but the authors are open to the possibility of it being completely distinct if more evidence comes forward. The authors are also recommending MOR553 to the ICCN to designate it as the neotype specimen for Truodon, despite the holotype not being lost or destroyed. In conclusion, the revival of Truodon is one of many great comebacks for extinct taxa in recent memory, and it certainly wouldn't be the last for 2025 either. In other news, 
A new Cambrian radiodont was discovered from the famous Burgess Shale, located in what is now British Columbia in Canada. The new taxon is known by more than 60 specimens discovered in the last 30 years. This basal most herded, named Mosra fentany, is named after the iconic insect kaiju Mothra, otherwise known in Japan as Mosura, which is where the generic name comes from, and it was named after the benevolent kaiju for its moth-like appearance. Names aside, the amount of specimens discovered in this paper shows that Mosura is already a well-understood taxon, reaching lengths of 1.5 to 6.1 centimeters. It is among one of the smallest radiodonts ever discovered. Its body proportions show that Mosura was an active and highly maneuverable nectonic predator, hunting prey close to its own size and tracking them using their three eyes. Because of its abnormally large gill apparatus, Mosura might have even hunted in deeper waters where oxygen was low. Low. The discovery of this small, unique predator not only adds to the diversity of radiodonts and other predators in the Burgess Shale, but it also shows how well adapted these arthropods were in the many different environments they called home. It is indeed a fantastic find. Moving forward to the Triassic, the possible defense capabilities for a sauropodomorph have been discovered. Platyosaurus, a dinosaur from late Triassic rocks of Western Europe, was one of many large herbivores ancestral to the iconic long-necked sauropods. One specimen of P. trossingensis, initially described in 2015, was analyzed in this new publication. After studying the measurements of the caudal vertebrae and using biomechanical modeling, the idea of Platyosaurus using its tail like a whip is proposed, being used to defend itself from predation and possibly used during interactions with members of its kind. The speed and power of this tail, if used as such, is compared to extant and extinct long-tailed reptiles like monitor lizards, iguanas, and even diplodocoid sauropods. And although it's currently a hypothesis, further research will need to be done in order to finally conclude this. If this is true, however, this shows paleontologists what kinds of defenses primitive sauropods used early on in their evolution, and this means that even the earliest members of these iconic long-necked dinosaurs predated their whip-tailed descendants by millions of years, evolving them far earlier than previously expected. Yet another incredible study. Focusing our attention back to British Columbia, a new elasmosaurid was described. Elasmosaurs are well known for being the largest long-necked plesiosaurs ever discovered, iconic for their large size and long necks reaching half of their entire body length, with some even exceeding more than half. This new paper formally names the first and only plesiosaur, specifically an elasmosaurid, to ever be discovered on Vancouver Island. Known by two partial skeletons discovered between 1988 and 2000, 2020 in the Santonian aged Haslam formation, and given many different nicknames over the decades, the plesiosaur was finally given the name Trascosaurus sandre by lead author F. Robin O'Keefe. The genus and species are in turn named after the discoverers of the holotype specimen and the lead author's mother. Although on the smaller side of Elasmosauridae, Trascosaurus is unique in anatomy, particularly with the skull. Its large, thin teeth and the width of its jaws is compared to basal aristonectines, a bizarre clade of filter feeders from the southern hemisphere. However, this idea is suggested to be a result of convergent evolution. Either way, its phylogenetic placement shows it's closely related to basal elasmosaurs instead, and is placed as a sister taxon to the equally bizarre Nekodonectes from Montana. The discovery of Trascosaurus is huge for Vancouver Island. Its presence shows that the island was once occupied by a rich and pristine underwater ecosystem teeming with both primitive and advanced life of all different shapes and sizes. And finally, for our last publication, we travel back to the Paleozoic once again, this time in the Permian period. New trace fossils of an early Permian synapsid were identified from the Tambac Formation located in Germany. This fossil, like any other trace fossils, preserves footprints of the animal, which is identified to be from a Sphenacodontid, a family of stem mammals that the iconic sailback Dimetrodon is from. However, the trace fossil also shows the animal that made these tracks rested on its underbelly. This 
in turn preserves the integument of this long gone predator. The tree's fossil was assigned as a new ichnotaxon of fossil tracks named Bromacarichnus requiescens. This is a rather important find because it gives paleontologists our first look into Sphenacodontid integument, revealing that the limbs, trunk, and tail of this family tree were actually covered in epidermal scales rather than soft skin or hair like their descendants. This gives them a more reptilian appearance than previously thought. This fantastic find gives us more insight into what kind of skin the earliest ancestors of all living and extinct mammals had, and this gives us a better understanding about the full appearance of Sphenacodontids, one of the most successful predators to have lived between the Carboniferous and Permian periods. Overall, May was filled with some wonderful discoveries, from new predators named after giant monsters, to the earliest whip-tailed herbivores, and the resurrection of what's considered as one of the most intelligent dinosaurs to have ever lived. This is only a fraction of what other fantastic discoveries were made in May, and while we didn't get to cover everything from this month, we hope you enjoyed learning about these new papers regardless. And with that, we'd like to give a special thanks to Edge for giving us the opportunity to be a part of this amazing yearly event. As stated before, a link to his channel will be in the description below. Additionally, links to everyone else's Paleo Rewinds will be included in the description below as they are published, so make sure to go and check those out as well. And with that, thank you all for watching.